This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is the Huawei MatePad Pro. I'm a little late to the party on this one because they don't sell these here in the US where I'm from. And my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and I really wanted to get my hands on this to review it. Why? Well, a funny thing happens in the review world when something comes out. What happens is a story forms around a product. For example, the story around the iPad Pro is Apple made an amazing piece of hardware, but it's not a laptop replacement. Or the story around Microsoft's Surface Go was, hey, this is a cute little tablet. It's great, but it's underpowered. I was guilty of feeding into that story, but that's because for me and what I do, it was true. So the story with the MatePad Pro is this. This is the greatest Android tablet ever made. It is an iPad Pro killer, but it has one fatal flaw. What is that fatal flaw? It doesn't have access to any Google app Apps, including the Google Play Store. I don't want to get into all of the politics surrounding it, so what's important to know is last year the U.S. government said no U.S. company is allowed to work with Huawei, a Chinese company. And the end result of this is you're not going to find apps like Facebook, Instagram, Google Maps, Gmail, all of the things that you're used to finding on a normal Android tablet. The story around the Huawei MatePad Pro is fantastic. It would be amazing if it only it had these apps, but after testing it, I found it to be, even without the apps, just pretty mediocre. I can see how some people like it. The back has this faux leather feel. It comes in a couple different colors. I chose the green color because that was the only one they had available on eBay. It is a 10.8 inch screen with a really high resolution for its size of 2,560 pixels by 1,600 pixels. That is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. They also made the bezels thinner for a more modern look than you find on many other tablets. And this thing has some pretty good internals. Huawei's own Kirin 990 octa-core processor, 128 gigabytes of storage, six gigabytes of RAM, and you can configure these higher, going all the way up to 512 gigabytes of storage or eight gigabytes of RAM. There's even some extra bells and whistles here, like it supports wireless charging. And then there is this. This is the M Pencil, which, well, I guess it's okay. I'll talk more about that in detail in a minute. When you break down all these specs, look at it on paper, the MatePad Pro actually seems like a pretty good tablet, but my problem with it is it just didn't pay attention to any of the details. What you wanna do in design is you wanna lean into your strengths and away from your weaknesses. A good example of this is Google's new Pixel 4a phone. What are the weaknesses? Well, it's an inexpensive phone, so it doesn't have a great hardware camera. You won't find a glass back like you do on higher end phones. So Google, they lean into it. They go all in on the plastic. They're not even trying to make this look like glass like other low end phones do. Now the camera here is simple. It's not really a fancy camera at all, but what Google is really good at is software. So what they're showing is, hey, this is what our photo manipulation algorithm looks like on a fairly meh, mediocre camera. And that's a pretty big flex here because people are getting some amazing images out of that phone. On the MatePad, the weaknesses here are the screen. It's an LCD screen, and in and of itself, it's, it's not horrible. The colors look good, it's well lit, but there is a weakness with the screen and they managed to lean right into that weakness. The laminated screen tends to discolor and get darker around the edges when it's cropped tight. Instead of trying to find ways to hide the darkness on the screen by say rolling it underneath the bezel and making the bezels a little bit wider, it cuts those bezels smaller so you see more of that discoloration. Since the bezels were smaller, they had to use a hole punch camera instead of putting the camera in a bezel. The end result of this is creating one more place on the screen where there's going to be some discoloration around that hole punch camera. These are little things. None of these are necessarily deal breakers, but they feel sloppy and they take what would be a premium tablet and make it feel cheaper than it actually is. So when you take some of these sloppy choices and you mix it in with the real deal breaker, well, we should talk about that. The real deal breaker here is that app store. But before I do that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Professional websites, online stores, portfolios. It's even easy to claim your own domain and URL. Create a custom site that matches your style, bring your ideas to life. I took it for a spin. I built my portfolio with it. And as a web designer back in the day, it would have taken me a week or two to do what I was able to do in an evening using Squarespace. If you're showing off your work to potential clients or trying to land a full-time job, those templates look really Really professional. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. 
Since you do not have the Google Play Store, you are limited to whatever apps are in the Huawei App Store, and there's just not a lot here. I shouldn't say that. There's actually a ton of apps here. There just aren't the apps you want to use. So there's a whole bunch of drawing apps available for Android that I normally use, but most of them weren't available here. There were really two that I could use. There was Ibiz Paint X and there was Medibang. There were other art apps in the store, but most of those were novelties like kids coloring apps and that sort of thing. I did find Autodesk Sketchbook and it had a button that said add, but not one to download. Once you tap on add, that basically turned into another button that said view. And then if I tapped on view, it gave me an option to add to the wish list. So I'm not really sure what the add button did in the first place. It was just a bunch of buttons that took you to another disappointment. I was able to download iBez X and it gave me a weird error and told me, hey, uh, this one you just downloaded from the Huawei App Store doesn't work. Go try the other one. So I did, and that version seems to be stuck in phone resolution mode. It doesn't take up the whole screen, which is, ah, uh, it's so disappointing. So I ended up using Medibang for most of the drawing that you're seeing here in the background, and even then I kept running into little bugs. I also bumped into weird errors all over the place, like little UX things that you don't see on vanilla Android, but are present here. For example, it wanted me to update the firmware on the M Pencil. Fair enough, that's cool. It needed me to have location data on in order to do that. Now, usually at that point, Point, Android would have a little pop-up that said, hey, can this app use your location? And you say, yeah, this once or whenever you want or no. But instead it just blindly dumps you into the settings where you have to poke around and find that information for yourself. I know, I know, I'm overly sensitive to bad UI because I spent most of my career designing it. Designing good UI, not bad UI. This is basic 101 stuff. Say close instead of cancel or give people a circle button so they think that they're doing something instead of just closing a window. So this is the M Pencil. This is Huawei's version of the Apple Pencil, it even charges the same way. You connect it to the top, it tells you, hey, 82%. It's not stuck on there really hard. It's pretty easy to knock off with just your fingers, um, but it does stay, it does charge. That's how it works. Let's go ahead and see how the pencil performs. So first up, I like to just draw some lines. I'm drawing them at a fairly normal speed. I could get out a ruler and check it, and I would give this a C. There's some wobble to the line, um, even just kind of normal speed line, I get some jitter. It's not horrifically bad, it's not horrible, but it's definitely there. Uh, you're definitely gonna find it. And the fact that this is the only app you can use, uh, I mean, apart from iBiz Paint. Now, as far as pen pressure, it's pretty good. You know, a very light touch is gonna give you a very light line, and then I can apply more pressure, and I'm gonna get those lines in there. You're gonna see a lot of lag here. This is a very basic pen. Um, as I'm drawing lines, you see it lags pretty much everywhere. It's not super responsive. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and let's open up iBiz Paint. This is what it looks like. I can't go full screen, unfortunately. And let's just draw with our brush again. And you can see uh, we get decent pressure, but we also get a ton of lag. And unfortunately, that's the thing that really does this in. I will say that the palm rejection is pretty good. The palm rejection is up there with the Apple Pencil, so that is one thing that they have done very well. Uh, but everything else about this pen is just very, very mediocre. So what are the pros and cons? At the end of the day, it comes down to the App Store. That is the big thing. As, as much as I didn't really care for the pencil, the App Store is what really cripples this thing in any way, shape, or form. In that regard, the stories people told about this are absolutely true. But on the other hand, the stories about it being an iPad killer, not even close. Even if it did have access to a lot of apps, I think I would definitely recommend something like Samsung's Tab S6 Lite, which came out a few months ago. It's cheaper, and honestly, it's a better piece of hardware. The Tab S7 and S7 Plus uh, have just been announced at the time that I'm recording this. Hopefully they'll be out pretty soon and I'll be able to review them. I have a feeling those are probably gonna be much better products as well. So what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Do you plan on importing one of these? Don't, but if you are interested in it, let me know, what do you think about it? Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.